My name is David. Uh, I work for GVEP, the Global Village Energy Partnership. We are a part of the consortium who is behind um, the CSE um, as advisors and uh, we are an international NGO that is focused on energy enterprises and helping them grow um, their business through technical assistance and business development services uh, throughout uh, the region and, and um, the world in a way. Um, I like the title Decoding Carbon Finance because there's so much jargon and uh, I hope to use only two uh, acronyms when I talk. So um, I've studied environmental sciences and did a lot of work also through my thesis on uh, climate change and carbon finance and uh, followed uh, the events in that market um, closely over the last couple of years and just also over those years I had many people also now GVEP uh, approaching us, approaching me um, what is this carbon finance, how does it work um, how can I get money out of it and it's always like magic credits like dropping from the sky um, and, and appearing and uh, I think I want to give a bit of a down to earth assessment in a way of, of, of what it is, giving an overview and then uh, um, make it brief, leave it to my colleagues to then uh, comment further and I think have more of a productive question and answer session later. So the origin and the background of carbon finance um, came up with the international climate negotiations where the developed countries were uh, making commitments to reduce their emissions um, and saying uh, to, to certain industries this is the maximum that you can emit over those years um, and then allocate permits um, to companies and give them a price in this way as a way to incentivize emission reductions. Um, but these emission reductions need to be proven and verified and can then be traded between the industry. So you need to imagine it like a, a big steel factory in, in Germany um, having something in, in the smoke stack that measures how much CO2 comes out and if that's more or less um, which what they're supposed to do. Um, that has implications also to projects we, we do here and I'll link to that later. Um, and to allow then participation of developing countries in that process and also to achieve cheaper emission reductions that what could be um, achieved um, mainly in Europe and um, developed countries. Um, a so-called clean development mechanism uh, was invented of the CDM, one of the acronyms, um, which is an acronym that is very common in the carbon market um, and everyone seems to hear about it but not really being clear of what it is. It's projects in developing countries that verify how much emissions their projects are reducing and then selling these to the markets um, in the developed countries um, who want to buy these permits. Um, often I see prices around of like 10 or 20 um, euros per ton of CO2, I think that's the second abbreviation, um, carbon dioxide and it's measured in a ton and that's what gives you one carbon credit, that's important for the carbon market. Um, but these days um, prices are less than, than three euros so that's quite important in terms of assessing if it's worth doing a project or, or not. Um, and this clean development mechanism has over 6,000 projects worldwide um, most of them in China, that's why some people call it China Development Mechanism, uh, less than 2% in Africa. That already says it's quite hard to do it here in the first place. Um, we have a performance of 50% of the claimed reduction, so each project will say I'm going to reduce this much emissions and then go through the verification process um, and we're looking at less of 50% of these emission reductions that have been claimed at the beginning are actually achieved. So it's also quite hard to then actually achieve those emission reductions. And linking to what I said earlier, it's really, it used to be a mechanism for the industry of the industry. It's um, a factory in China being more energy efficient or a, a big wind farm being put up um, in, in China where you can, you can have the, the economics of scale that you can do all the verifications that are necessary to, to prove how much you're um, reducing. Um, probably we hear, we hear from others and Tom Movino later from the voluntary market where you're looking at um, conscious consumers in, in the Western world 
um, who want to offset their flights um, and, and do good for, 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 for the world and the environment by purchasing carbon credits, where then the market is slightly different, where they look at, at pictures and, and CSR type of, of projects um, on, on a website with, with pictures. Um, but I'll, I'll leave that to, to later and, and discussions. Um, on the methodology, um, as said, everything needs to be in very minute date detail um, dis described of what you're going to do and how you're going to measure those emission reductions and then follow it through exactly. Um, so it's really a question, um, is it worth um, doing all that? And first you need to ask yourself if you're a company looking at that market, uh, is there a specific methodology that can do that? Um, in the voluntary, as in the CDM market, you have methodologies and you, you really need to follow them. So if you're, for example, in a technology type that is just not in that list, you might have over 120 to choose from, but if it's not in there, you just won't do it unless you write a methodology, but that will take you two, le two years at least and requires quite a lot of, um, of, of expertise. Then, um, what are you... Um, looking at before you do your project. Um, you will need to look at what is your, your baseline. So are people, for example, using firewood and you want to have them use less firewood with an efficient stove? Or are you placing diesel um, generators with, with solar mini grids? Um, and that's quite Im important if you look at um, the economics. So for example, if you um, use firewood uh, from a plantation, um, because people in that area where you want to do the project, they have a forest nearby that is managed um, and they take the firewood from there. You can't claim carbon emissions because the firewood that they use currently is, is sustainable because it's a managed forest. Um, same for example for, for hydropower. Um, in many countries um, in East Africa, you have big hydropower resources that are powering most of the electricity. If you then put a green project into that grid, you're not replacing much diesel because there wasn't any in the first place. So that's, that's one thing that is really important about the carbon market, um, to think about those, those things that, that matter, but you, you might not necessarily have them within your project. Your project might be as green as it's possible uh, if everything else around it is green you don't make a difference for the carbon market. Um, also, you need to have everything to a very scientific standard and do, do surveys um, in terms of how many households are currently using firewood and how many are already using efficient stoves um, and then compare that and measure that um, later on down the line and, and do a verification uh, every year. Um, then this links to the problem of the dispersed um, nature of a lot of uh, renewable energy projects that we see here in the region, be it the retail of solar products or um, domestic biogas. Um, you will you'll really need to know the customers, see where they are and have a, quite a large um, sample of those customers to be checked every year um, for the verification. Um, and that's costly and it's, it's, it's a challenge to, to keep those records. Um, so then looking at the, at the costs, and with that I'll, I'll conclude, um, to do an, a normal project uh, will easily cost like $100,000 um, in consultancy fees if you're having uh, like an industrial um, scale project because there are a lot of fees involved in terms of writing the documentation um, submitting it there are a lot of fees and there are third parties that you then need to hire who will fly in and, and tick all the boxes and check if you've done it according um, to what the manual says um, there are also other special vehicles, incentives to do smaller projects and in the voluntary market these prices aren't that high but we're easily talking about a few ten thousand dollars and you'll need to recover that money later with the carbon credits that you earn. So you really need to compare the costs and the, the returns and that not only about the monetary value um, of how much am I investing now and how much money am I getting get back later from carbon credits, but also on opportunity costs. And there's quite a lot of red tape in the system and you'll easily take you a year or, or more um, for the whole process of um, starting to think about carbon finance uh, until you've, you've done, you, you're through it 
and you haven't even seen the first return on, on your investment. So there are a lot of opportunity costs in terms of should I focus on carbon or should I focus on selling more products? Um, and that's something that we can uh, discuss um, later as well. And I think with that, I'll conclude and leave it to my colleagues and we have a, a fruitful discussion.